just four or five years ago, I think we called it health IT, HIT. Now you hardly ever hear that. But for me, at least, uh, digital is, you know, all the activities um, that uh, are, uh, you know, whether it's an element or it's an activity on its own that are driven by, um, you know, again, the creation and transmission of data. Um, so, you know, increasingly it's hard to find part of healthcare that does not have a digital element. And, um, and that'll just grow over time. You know, things that had been very much, let's call it analog are, um, you know, increasingly things that involve um, uh, digits. So, you know, the systems that record the patient encounter and transcribe them uh, and then reproduce uh, electronic notes on that uh, with, in most cases, very little human involvement until the end, you know, is an example of how, um, you know, that sacred encounter between uh, clinician and patient uh, that has, goes back literally thousands of years has now been adapted um, uh, uh, or uh, now relies on uh, that digital element in that piece of it. In the end, it's data and the ability to assess, manage, make it timely that is key. And whether the tools are, you know, uh, um, computational in general or AI or machine learning driven, the, the uh, creation, uh, the uh, aggregation, and the an analytics around data sets, some of them uh, immensely large, uh, really characterize the, the time in healthcare we're at now, which is, you know, we created a system over the last 20 years in terms of electronic health records that uh, made uh, so much of this possible, not that it, it wasn't occurring before, but now it's it's uh, reaches you, you know, virtually every element of care, at least in this country, uh, although footnote, a lot of care still re revolves around faxes. Uh, going back, this has been a national priority in the US. Uh, the infrastructure is there. So the creation, uh, you know, capture of the data, the creation of the data sets, the aggregation and the management of that uh, is, uh, the time we are currently in. Uh, all these other tools uh, will uh, revolve around uh, patient and individual data. I think AI, like other things in healthcare and, and life overall, the potential of it became known. I, I, I was looking at a book from 1966 that the author uh, described the future of AI in healthcare. It could have been written last week. But the, the ingredients had to be in place. And again, the, the creation of data, the, the ability to manipulate it, and the ability to insert it into care, uh, that's what's arrived now. So while uh, you know, potentially it was overhyped, uh, that's not the case today. It, it, at least in some categories, uh, things are at critical mass uh, in a way that, that the re there is a reality about how AI um, uh, machine learning and other uh, has and will influence care. And it's, you know, a, a, a lot of it's behind the scenes. Some of it has to do on the administrative side of care um, uh, where patients don't see it, but, but AI is uh, for real and it is influencing care right now and it will in only increase in the future. For our size and, and I think reflecting our history where you know, some of the initial electronic medical records were actually the work of our faculty, uh, we are a leader. We've made a big commitment. Companies like GE are partnered with us, but there's a lot of AI strength in the US system and it's growing. So yeah, we are a leader without question. And we have dynamic faculty like uh, Dr. Keith Dreyer uh, who are national and international leaders. But it, again, there's a lot, there's a, uh, 
quite a bit going on in every region of the US. I think um, you, you just uh, listed a, a broad array of, of organizations that are uh, making a difference in healthcare. Uh, obviously it's 20% of the US economy. So there are tens of thousands of organizations that are in one category or the other. Again, my experience, the, the key to uh, making substantial contribution is to appreciate the role and the capabilities that your organization brings. Um, and and um, that typically means you're gonna be working in a collaborative environment where um, you know the strengths of whatever your organization are, are matched up with strengths, let's say, if it's us, working with clinicians, uh, understanding you know, what care looks like when it's delivered um, uh, uh, you know, at, at the patient level, um, understanding um, you know, requirements of uh, data privacy in the healthcare environment. All those things um, you know, re require a level of expertise. And uh, again, in the collaborative environment, uh, you know, we view it as collaborative innovation. The exchange of uh, perspective, knowledge, experience, cultures among um, organizations, whether they're you know, large industrial firms, uh, tech companies, um, uh, or academic research centers. It, it, uh, the combination of those uh, has been uh, wonderful for healthcare for decades. And you know, we see it as an area of uh, substantial growth in the future. I think in the end, it comes down to patience. And uh, I think organizations that understand people and the lives that they lead uh, will bring a lot of value, assuming that they can master the interface uh, with, uh, you know, with the provider and the, the realm of uh, teaching and academic research. Uh, but, but you know, more and more care is gonna be provided remotely in the future. And the way people find themselves and the, econo the economic and social conditions that they're experience on a, experiencing on a daily basis, um, you know, clearly are the most important ingredients in long-term health. So uh, the, the organizations that are able to uh, characterize that, understand it and match it up in a, in a care-focused environment will be providing unique value. I think the pandemic demonstrates that healthcare providers cannot operate in isolation from the, uh, you know, broadly the social determinants of health. Again, that, that was all known and, and uh, certainly was a priority, but uh, even now, if you look at the new uh, newest numbers in terms of uh, the disease and uh, mortality around it, uh, it it is um, uh, you know skews uh, by race and uh, economic strata in a way that should be uh, alarming to anyone in the U.S., but particularly people who are involved in delivering care. So, thinking about the future. Uh, 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 addressing uh, in an organized way, uh, trying to uh, remedy uh, uh, some of those uh, drivers, those negative drivers, I, I think will be an ever higher, high priority, higher priority uh, among the, the um, care caregivers uh, in, in the US and around the world. So, I, you know, I would see that as a change. Again, not that it wasn't here, not that it hasn't been here for a long time. It's just uh, 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 establishing that as a uh, permanent priority over the next uh, decade or two. Uh, uh, I see that as a key change.